Hey everybody and welcome to the latest installment of Split Second. My name is Julio and I've got something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach on in my pocket and see what it is? No. And I'm in a glass case of emotion. No. And I can be your hero, baby. <laughs> just just do the do the just do the thing. Before proceeding, remember to do all the YouTube things. The like, the comment, the sub. So spicy, the sub. In all seriousness though, I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And just any support you can give me with just a like, a comment, a sub, anything. It'll really help the channel uh, in, in terms of, of, you know, accomplishing that goal, right? But that's enough of that, you know, self-promotion bit. Um, whatever. Today, we got a brand new boy on the channel. This is the Flitterman. Flitter. Flittermouse. Flitterman von Rieste. Murchner. It's, it's the Flitterman von Rieste Murchner. I am so sorry, Adam. I'm going to give it another 10 or 20 seconds of me just talking so that you know, this counts as a view for YouTube's algorithm, but spoiler alert, I love this thing. I am butchering the pronunciation, I'm sure, but what cannot be butchered at all is just how lovely this watch is. Flitterman Von Risa, it's a new micro brand, right? And contrary to the last new micro brand that, that came to the channel, which you can see uh, right here in this corner, the uh, Flitterman Von Riesta, well, I think I am the first. I checked. I'm pretty sure I am the first to get this review out. So, haha, take that, other reviewers. Now, nah, those people are cool and better at their jobs than I am. This watch is going to be going live on Kickstarter on May the 1st. Uh, the one I have in my hands is a prototype, so there are a couple of changes that are going to be made. Uh, but not too many. A couple things worth note here. First, the crown is going to be enlarged a little bit. That's something that Adam has uh, has brought to my attention. Another thing is uh, this prototype has a movement uh, that is not the final one that they're going to use. It, this one currently has the ST36 hand wind. Uh, the final version is going to have the SW260 Salita movement, which is automatic, so keep in mind then that when I measure the thickness, that one is probably going to be just a slightly thicker boy because of that rotor, all right? Other than that, what we have here is pretty representative of what the final product is going to end up being like. Another thing, real quick, that I do want to mention, um, this video is not sponsored. Um, I, I have not received any sort of compensation. I'm not going to be receiving a free watch uh, from uh, Flitterman Von Riesta. But uh, a conversation has been had around the possibility of maybe once all the review cycle is done, me getting one of the prototypes at a discount. Um, nothing has been set in stone yet, but I do believe in, you know, transparency. So just letting you guys know. Having said that, that possibility of getting a watch from them, even if it's a discounted prototype, it is not going to form uh, my opinions on this, uh, uh, on this, I'm still going to have my segment of things that I complain about because I always do. I'm never happy about anything. All right. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into the, um, the facts about this watch. So first of all, Vladimir and Von Riste are based out of Indiana, but they do have a rich German heritage. And, you know, Germany is just known for making such great watches like Laco, Stova, Ivice. Und. Und. Und Bex? Und Bex? Yeah. Und Bex! Uh, no. Bex is a beer. Hmm. Beer. Excuse me a minute. Ah, oh, It's never a wrong time for a brewski. And, uh, yeah. I know. I did that whole beer fest thing. In a prior video, but that was never launched on this channel, so I'm going to recycle it. <laughs> There's a lot of German design that's coming through on this guy here. It, it's got a little bit of Bauhaus to it. I just, I love pretty much 
everything that's under the crystal, you know. I love the dial. I love the indices. I love lamp. So the case is a 316L stainless steel. Features a full polish to finish. It does feature some pretty cool engravings around the uh, mid case right here. Um, etching. I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it, but you know, it does break up the monotony of the of the full polish. It it also features these etchings here on the lugs and on the crown guards. And what the effect that that accomplishes is that the bezel seems like a separate piece and i think that's really cool the uh crown guards and the lugs feature kind of the same design language very angular uh juxtaposed to like the roundness <laughs> of the of the watch itself the crown itself is knurled and is really good for operation both the crown and the deployment clasp are signed it has a very supple very nice leather band which is embossed with the Flermann von Riesta logo again going back to the design language here it does have a little bit of Bauhaus in it which I think is really cool the watch kind of skirts the I guess we can call it genres of pilot and field and it's got just a little bit of dressiness to it too it's I think it's a great first offering, especially in a world where, where, you know, divers are a dime a dozen, right? It's a risky move coming out with a non-dive watch as your first watch. But man, I really think Von Riesta... Yeah, I'm just going to short it, shorten it. I'm sorry, Adam. Um, I, I, I really think Von Riesta are pulling it off. You know, it's a hard trick to pull off, but I think they're doing it very well. Now, as far as the dial goes... It's a very simple layout, right? You have a navy blue dial, which, you know, my, my ring light is making sure that you can see it's navy blue. But trust me, in natural light, this thing is very dynamic. It, it goes from blue to black, and it just, it's a chameleon of a dial, really. You have triangles at 12, 3, and 9, a small seconds at 6. And you got Arabics pretty much everywhere else. The hands are, you know, pencil hands, basically. I do like the pop of color on the small seconds hand. It's really interesting when you have all these grays and blues and you got just a pop of red there. The uh, dial, it features at 12 o'clock a cross of Lorraine. It again features on the deployment clasp here. And what I got, it's just, it's interesting seeing this kind of symbol on a German inspired brand. And honestly, I love it, you know. Um, beneath that is the Flermann von Riesta logo, the watch model, the Munchner, mechanical, and then the water resistance. Uh, you do have uh, minute markers uh, spread out, you know, throughout the, uh, the, the border of the dial there. But, you know, otherwise it does look very clean, right? The case back, you just have the Flermann von Riesta logo uh, with, again, the model the Muschner Munchner Munchner <sighs> I'm so sorry and yeah just everything about this is just really clean and precise uh, it's a very it's a very German design language you know um it's hard to it's hard to put into words but I love it so in terms of specifications here you have a case size of 44 essentially with a thickness of 10.8. Uh, keep in mind the prototype that I have here, it does have an ST36 powering it. The production models are going to be featuring an SW260. <clears throat> so you are gonna have a Swiss Salita automatic and the rotor is gonna add a little bit more thickness to it. The lug to lug is 52, but it doesn't really impact wearability all that much. And I'll get a wrist shot for you in a minute. There's a pretty decent downturn to the lugs, um, which it doesn't look like it on camera, but usually anything over 50 millimeters looks kind of big on my wrist. And let me just show you a quick wrist shot here. There is pretty much zero overhang. It's almost at the limits there, right? Um, I do have a seven and a half inch wrist for your reference, but yeah, it wears really well.
Finally, in uh, terms of measurements, the lug width is 22, so it takes 22 millimeter straps, which, as you know, is a pretty popular selection, and it means that you're not going to want for straps. You're, you're pretty much going to be spoiled for choice. And uh, this thing is something of a strap monster. Uh, it doesn't really fit every selection, but man, it, it nails a good portion of them. The uh, crystal is sapphire. Getting a very strong reading out of that. What do I like about this watch? There is a lot to like about this watch. Like I said, I am a big fan of the way this blue plays with the light. Love, love that small seconds hand. It's small seconds uh, complication done right, you know? You have the concentric circles on that subdial. That rounded square bordering it, and just that red seconds hand breaking up the color scheme. Everything about it is just phenomenal. The Cross of Lorraine, like I said, is a great detail that history buffs will definitely appreciate. I like the grippiness of the knurled crown. I always do appreciate a knurled crown. And this the strap is phenomenal. It's very pliable. And it smells great. Um, I tend to rest my chin on my hand while I'm working on my left hand. And while wearing this watch, I could get that smell of that rich leather smell. Um, just from, you know, resting my chin on my hand. So this is, it was a great overall experience. It's very, it engages all the senses, you know? Except taste. I, I did not like this. I promise I didn't. And I understand that promising that is weirder than just not saying anything about it. <sighs> I am a hot mess. What do I wish were different? Well, I know I just said that I love the grippiness of this crown, but I did find it a tad small. Especially with this prototype that has a hand-wound mechanical movement. As that spring gets tighter and tighter, this crown gets harder and harder to operate because it is so small. Adam, the uh, owner of Flitterman Von Riesta, he did let me know that the production models are going to have a slightly larger crown, which should help with that. Furthermore, it is going to have an automatic movement in the back, so you're not going to find yourself hand winding it too much. So it should be a non-issue for production models. The deployant clasp. I love the idea of deployant clasps. It's, it's a great concept, you know, it's there to protect the leather strap. Normally when you're wearing a leather banded watch, you're doing this deal to get it under the keepers, right? But with a deployant, the idea is that when you put it on, you do one side first, the side nearest to the keepers. But then you take the other end and you just kind of slide it right through, right? Without bending it. Now, it's a great idea. The problem I have with the point class is that they have these buttons here. Those buttons always dig into my wrist. So, in order to keep that from happening, I tend to wear these looser than I normally would um, wear uh, a watch, right? The problem is that then it starts jangling around my wrist and it's just, I can never get a good fit with deployment class. Not a fan of the execution of them. Um, and speaking of execution, it's kind of a nitpick, but I have seen deployments include uh, some perlage work here. And uh, this just kind of looks kind of bleh, kind of, kind of humdrum, kind of, kind of ho-hum, but whatever. That's a part you never see anyway. So again, that's just me being nitpicky. I am not a fan of the paragraph at 12. Honestly, I would have just left it at the brand name, which already takes enough real estate as it is, and the model, and that's it. Flitterman von Riester Munchner. I think I got it right that time. Um, the whole mechanical, and especially the water resistance, this isn't really an active wear watch. You know, it's not a, a diver per se, so, you know, it's great that it offers 100 meters of water resistance, but I personally don't care about that feature, especially on a watch like this, right? There's no need to advertise it, I think. Now, I haven't brought it up so far, and man, it feels like a missed opportunity. The loom on this is... it leaves a lot to be desired. 
you only get a little bit of loom on the hands and that's it. And you know, the camera just isn't doing justice to how, um, to how much depth the applied Arabics give to this watch. I would have loved to see those be loomed. It just, it really feels like a missed opportunity. Also, I'm not a fan of the all polish finish. And I brought that up on my Aragon Caprice video, which you can see here. Um, not a fan of the all polish finish because it really is a smudge magnet. I really do appreciate a variety of finishes on a watch. And if you're going to do just one finish, you should do brushed. Brushed finishes hide scratches better. They hide fingerprints better. If you're just going to do one finish, do brushed. <laughs> Any QC issues? None at all that I could find. So if the production models are as good as this prototype, you should be good to go. The Flitterman von Riesta Munchner, I think I got it right that time actually, is going live on May the 1st. And it ha it's going to have a price, a final price of $899. And I do think that's fair for the movement that you're getting. And, you know, just the specs across the board with this watch. It's a good watch with a pretty fair price. I did at one point ask Adam about a discount code for you guys, but honestly, over the course of the conversation with him, that kind of fell through the cracks. I'm going to be following up with him and, you know, whatever I get for you guys, I'm going to include as a little graphic here or in the description down below. Now, something to consider about the sales of this watch, um, and I think that's going to be you know, the final point that I'm going to make here. Um, Vladimir and Van Risa are going to be donating a portion of the proceeds to UNICEF Ukraine as well as uh, prisoner rehabilitation, right? Uh, more details about that can be found on their page and on their Kickstarter. But yeah, what did you think of the Flitterman von Risa Musha? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Until next time, stay safe, mask up, and be kind to each other because life can change in a split second. Whoa, you made it all the way to the end of the video, really? That's amazing, even I don't make it all the way to the end of the video. Well, if you like what you saw, click here for another video and click here to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring that bell so you're notified whenever I publish a new video. Thanks for watching. It's kind of a nitpick, but I have seen deployment clasps have, um, I have seen the deployment clasps. Blah, blah, blah. Flederman, 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 Von Liste, Munchner.